let's move on to our main topic, our wonderful, wonderful thumbnail by Ray. I'm obsessed with <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, shout out to that. Shout I mean, if anybody Ray. doesn't think that... Um, that um, well, that's not the thumbnail, but the thumbnail yeah. you made for the show. That it's thumbnail, so good. that thumbnail looks like oh. a musical to me. I love it. <laughs> this comes from Fiona. There Curry. it is. There it is. Yeah. I mean, that's right out of a musical number, right there. Look at that. I can hear the I song love in my it head. So much. Uh, Fian Cleary writes in, "Hey, John and crew, big fan, listening for years. Ah, oh, thanks, Fian. I saw a report Joker 2's Todd Phillips may be looking to cast Lady Gaga with Harley Quinn. Well, I think she's done well in certain projects. That are your, th- what are your thoughts?" And the fact that the sequel will be a musical it seems like a big departure from the original. What are your thoughts on this casting and direction? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. Well, yeah, it's not even just a potential. This is a musical. This is supposedly going to be a big song and dance mu- movie musical with Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. What did you want the movie to be called, Ray? <laughs> Joker 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a much better title. Let's listen about the actual title here, though. This is from Variety. So Lady Gaga is in early negotiations to join Joker Fualado as Joker's partner in madness, Harley Quinn, for what would be a musical sequel to director Todd Phillips' 2019 blockbuster. Speculation that Harley Quinn would appear in the movie first bubbled to the surface after Phillips posted the cover of the screenplay to Instagram on June 7th. The subtitle... I can never say it right, Rob. Can you say it? It's folie du. Folie du. Thank folie you. Du. I took Spanish. Refers to a shared <laughs> delusional disorder. <laughs> and Joker's only real companion, other than Batman anyway, has been Quinn, a character first created for Batman the Animated Series in the early 1990s. Yes, with Arlene Sorkin doing the original voice, crushing it, making that character one of the most beloved of DC franchise, and uh, giving her that lovely Gotham accent, because now we all know Gotham's in New Jersey, and that's how Gothamites really sound. I love it so much. So you hear that Lady Gaga is going to be in this, potentially, right? She's in negotiations. You hear that it's a musical. Rob, you seem excited about this news. Uh, You know what? I, I, I heard this, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Because if you think about, like, first of all, I'm a, I'm a, a fan of musicals. And there has been, like, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, it, I don't know, maybe it's like five years old, search out the Polish mermaid horror musical, The Lure. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's, it's on Ooh. Criterion. It's on Criterion. Uh, it was a debut film of, a, of, a, of an emerging female filmmaker in Poland. Watch that. Watch Repo the Genetic Opera. Oh, so watch good. Happiness of the pardon my pronunciation, Katakuris or whatever. Watch Brian De Palma's Phantom of the Paradise. You know, Ken Russell's Tommy or Litzomania. Uh Hedwig and the Angry Inch. I mean, there's so many ways you could go with this movie. And then if you had combined that with things like Alan Parker's Pink Floyd the Wall, or uh, take your pick. If anything lends itself to a musical, the idea of a shared delusion, that that the madness of the Joker and Harley Quinn together creates a magical world of craziness that the two of them inhabit together. Can you imagine going in and out of these? I mean, to me, this material is is what musicals are made out of. Like their shared delusion sends them into this whatever realm where where you've got Gaga's Juilliard trained voice singing wonderful surrealistic songs i mean i can't even this idea is so brilliant to me coupled with the fact that todd phillips directed a movie about gg allen and the murder junkies i uh, the uh, gg allen one of the punk rockers who would defecate on stage and throw it at his audience i mean todd phillips todd phillips directed that film the uh, this idea is one of the great ideas of all time and everybody, by the way, I was saying this, I'm like, you guys don't understand. What do you want to see? Yet another adaptation of Joker and Harley Quinn? You want to see the, uh, I want to see the animated series. Then you mean it. the animated series? Yeah. It, it I exists. want to see this. This idea, where are you going to go with a movie like this? This is a creative, crazy, wacky idea where Todd Phillips is swinging for the fences. And because the first Joker only cost $65 million, it made a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, who to to do a, a and then add La La Land to the mix? I mean, you the, the the potential here, 
the potential here excites me so much. This is the kind of creative swings that I want to see because right now, the entire fan base, I mean, I know from my Twitter feed, this is a terrible idea, Rob. Yeah, and then I would ask people, like, what, what animated films have you ever seen? Well, I've seen, like, Disney, you know, classic Disney cartoons. I'm like, okay. You know, go watch Repo the Genetic yeah. Opera. Go watch, watch Brian De Palma's. Yeah, go watch Ked Wing and the Angry Inch. Go, go see these things and think about the fact that a shared psychosis leads you in to a surreal world full of music and love and mayhem and murder. <laughs> I mean, it could be the, the idea of this. I, it just, it excites me. Intellectually, I'm like, I want to see this. And I'm glad you bring up the kind of idea of leaving what we saw in Joker and moving on to something that is more creative and different. Because you know me, when I heard that we were getting a sequel to this, I could not have been less interested. For me, this was a movie I saw once, I thought it was very well done, and I never need to see it again. So right. this does do a, oh, I got out and they're pulling me back in a little bit. Because I am interested in how they can execute this if done properly. I got to be honest with you, though. After the campaigning for House of Gucci, which you can, you can tell Gaga wants this Oscar. She wants it so bad. After the campaigning for House of Gucci, which, you know, I, I got to be a SAG nominee uh, right. board member this year. And I just got real burnt out on her. And... I'm a huge fan of her work and her music and everything. And she got a little up her own ass for me in terms of what she was talking about as a creator and what she brings to things and her process. And it just rubbed me the wrong way. So I, I'm not sure about her as Harleen Quinzel. And maybe before House of Gucci, I would have been really excited about it. I definitely think she has the chops. I think she's an incredible, incredible artist. But I'm a little burnt out right now. Well, I don't, I don't blame you because that Oscar campaign, they trotted her out. I mean, if you had a tea party for your daughter, she'd come Oof, yeah. and lobby you for an Oscar mm -hmm. vote. I get that. But that's not necessarily, I mean, she wants it, but yeah. they pushed her hard and she, she, cause that's, you know, you have to, you have to play that you game. Do. You got a campaign for an Oscar. But she was great in A Star is Born. I've really liked her albums. I'm a fan of, of hers. I just think the idea of, you know, look at, look at a Ken Russell movie. In, in, look what he did with with Tommy, mm -hmm. and even to a certain extent, even Altered States, which is not a musical. But yeah. the idea of what Todd Phillips might come up with, I can just see this could be. This is not going to be Highlander two, which was a god awful, god. <laughs> awful idea. But how do you make a sequel to that? It's literally there can only be one. Uh, yeah, I, who, yeah. Who did that? But the idea of madness, a collective madness shared by two people. I'm thinking, imagine a musical version of Natural Born Killers, you know, or something like well, that. It does seem like a really great way to visualize and explain this specific disorder as well in a yeah. way that I think would would be much more in-depth than what we saw in Joker in the first film. Absolutely. I and really man, I just think this movie's, movie could be bonkers insane. I think it could be disturbing and mm -hmm. dark and uh, really plumb the depths of the, the hellish relationship the two of them I, look the, the idea appeals to me i understand from what i understand not a lot of people that maybe would watch this show are necessarily fans of the musical genre but i would say it should be uh, there's there's a lot of musical and i can understand i wasn't either until i went to film school until i went to film school and i was at usc and drew casper showed us singing in the rain on the big screen mm. when i saw singing in the rain on the big screen i'm like oh I get it. I understand musicals now. Right? When an emotion no. is so big, it has to be sung. No, the musical's no, not no. going to do it for you, Ray. No, I'm just kidding. I want to go back to that question. Remember Alexander Kent, one of our members? He says, is this the first time an actor that won an Oscar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. An opportunity to play. Well, Heather Long, who was in the chat, she she said she thinks Bing Cosby uh, did it. Oh. Uh, he won oh. Best Actor for Father Chuck in yep. 1944. And then he reprised it in 1945. Oh, okay. Thank yes. you, Heather. Thank you, Good looking out. That's, yeah, he played that's this. That's awesome. right. That's, wow. That's some good, that's some well-researched. Yeah, Thanks that for that great. one. That is great. Heather is our IMDb. Well done, Heather. Excellent. <laughs> well, guys, the question, though, ultimately is up for you. Are you excited about this potentially being a musical with Lady Gaga as Harleen Quinzel? Or are you just going to go back, watch Mad Love, read Mad Love, and stick to that version of the Harley Quinn and Joker love story? Love story. Let us know what you think about this film in the comments down below. Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, 
HelloFresh. Let me take a second to tell you why my wife, Anne, and I love HelloFresh. As two working professionals, at the end of the day, it can be tough to get dinner together. And HelloFresh saves us loads of time, money, and most importantly, gives us great tasting and nutritious meals. And no joke, with the easy to follow along instructions, Anne and I actually have a blast cooking dinner together. And they're so foolproof, even I can do it alone when Anne's not there. And HelloFresh now has over 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That is the most choices of any meal kit out there. Customize your favorite dishes with new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another, upgrading for a more luxe experience, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. So guys, right now, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia16 and use the code Campia 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Campia 16. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. 